Hey YouTubers, welcome back to the channel. It's that Van Guy again with another weekly video. Today's video is going to be my monthly diecast meat haul video for July. Uh, I didn't bring home a boatload of stuff, just a few items, but they're all interesting and quality items, so we're going to check them out. We're pretty much going to be opening everything in the video except for maybe one, uh, but we'll sh I'll show you all the uh, card art and stuff before we tear into this stuff. Um, this is probably going to be the one, these two are actually um, kind of like a version A and version B almost. These are both uh, green light hobby exclusives. And this is from the, uh, this is a Tulsa Rama release, 1957 Plymouth Belvedere. And there's the brand new version and the unearthed version. Um, this brand new one, it has a little bit of damage on the card already, so I think I'm going to open this one, but I'm going to keep this one uh, carded, I believe, because uh, you, if you notice, the card art is slightly different on the front. Uh, this card art is like brand new and nice and clean, and this one looks like dirty and rusty, just like the car does. Uh, and then it gives the story on the back... But on the back of the card, other than like one is rusty and one is clean or dirty, um, they have the exact same description on the back and everything. Now, uh, I kind of want to keep one carded uh, because it gives the story about this car. Uh, this is a real life uh, vehicle, uh, like a story of a real vehicle. Uh, and I'll hold this uh, card close to the camera and hopefully it'll focus and you can if you want to pause it uh, you can read that it kind of gives the story of the uh, the car uh, basically the car was buried in the ground in uh, Tulsa Oklahoma uh, on their 50th year anniversary of statehood. And um, it was kind of part of a time capsule. And then they waited, uh, I think, 50 years. And then in 2007, the time, the vehicle and time capsule was uh, unburied, unearthed, and opened. And uh, they got, went to great lengths, supposedly, to keep the car, like, brand new. Because it was a brand new car right off the lot. When they buried it in uh, 1957, um, just a few miles on it, but uh, it wasn't preserved as well as they thought, and like water and uh, moisture and mud had gotten in there, so it was all covered in mud and it had rusted and and it looked like this when they pulled it out of the ground, and then they actually did have uh, some body shop fully restore it. Because they were really uh, sad to see that the car was so badly damaged. It was totally ruined. I think the interior was totally wrecked. And the car was just covered in mud and rust. Uh, it was just really, really bad shape. All the tires were dry rotted and garbage. So the car had to be pretty much totally restored. And then they did restore it at a later time and then re-debut it again. Uh, back to its original perfect uh, state, but because it has this little description and the story on the car on the back of the card, uh, I do want to keep one carded, um, just so that they understand like what's the deal with this car. And what I'll probably do is this one already has a flaw on the card, so I'll probably open up this one, and then I'll just get a smaller little case uh, and put this like right on top of this one like that so they can be displayed together like before and after so we're going to open this one this one will stay carded uh, but uh, i just wanted to show you both uh, i also picked up uh from one of the guys in my local diecast club he grabbed this for me uh, from his local walmart this is a brand new dodge a100 van 7,000 pieces worldwide and this is like a camper top like a pop top like a vw um, new casting, uh, from a series, not exactly sure what series it is, it doesn't really give you too much info, uh, but it's a new one, 
and I'm trying to collect all the Dodge A100s from M2. So uh, I was able to pick that up at the local diecast club. Uh, I also picked up this, someone had this custom for sale, uh, really cheap. Uh, do or die cast collectors club year one limited edition one of 30. And, uh, you know, I'm usually not real big on buying customs, but I just thought it was kind of cool. It looks like it's kind of like blood splattered or something. And it's got some cool five spoke wheels, uh, with some red trim on them. So just kind of an interesting custom and I got it really cheap. It was like dirt cheap. So I thought, what the hell, why not? So we'll open up that and check it out. And then last but not least, uh, this is really cool. This is one of the new uh, Ford Club Wagon Van uh, castings from Greenlight. Brand new, fairly new van casting from Greenlight. And this is uh, Hitch and Tow Series 20 in the Gulf livery. Now there is a single um, uh, Ford Club Wagon window van that is also a Gulf livery. This is the second Gulf livery. Um, but I didn't pick up the first one because I knew this one was coming out and I like this paint scheme better. So there are two different Gulf liveries on this uh, club wagon Ford window van. And it comes with a little trailer that opens, Gulf trailer. And I do have uh, a couple Gulf diorama pieces in 164 scale. I have a gas station from Green Light, Green Light and a, a weekend shop in the Gulf livery. That was a Miho exclusive. Uh, if you want to check those out, you can check out my channel, the playlist on my channel, check out the diorama playlist and there's different diorama pieces, reviews, and you can, uh, check out those, uh, Gulf, uh, diorama pieces from green light. So I just thought this would go really well with my diorama pieces already. And I liked the paint scheme on this, uh, new Ford van. Here's some of the other vehicles uh, from the Series 20. And uh, we're going to be opening this today and checking out the trailer and the van. Um, you know, I'm pretty much a completist, but I'm not a big fan of the snub nose Ford van. I don't think it's, it's not my favorite body style and I really don't like that it's a window van. I'm not really into window vans. I want, I like, like a cargo van or like a custom van. And this one just looks too much like a school bus. It looks pretty plain Jane, uh, when it's not in golf livery. So, uh, I am not going to be collecting every single version released by Greenlight of this Ford club wagon van, um, unless they change it and make it into like a cargo van where there's no windows. Um, I have a few, but like I said, I'm not going to collect them all, but I did want to get this one. It seemed pretty cool. So let me just, uh, grab the turntable, adjust the camera, and then we'll start uh, tearing into stuff. So stay tuned. Okay. The first one we'll check out is this, uh, custom because it's the easiest to get out of the packaging. Just kind of like a baggy car. I'll give you a shot of the bottom. A custom repainted. I kind of like the uh, wheel choice on this, like the five spoke wheels look pretty cool. Get a little more light on it, but just kind of like a, a splatter pattern or in like red and orange. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be blood or what, uh, but it's kind of cool that it's got a a red tinted windshield and it's got the red trim on the wheels so it kind of all goes together but like I said I got this really dirt cheap so uh, just figured why not add a custom to my super van collection which is huge at this point uh, I'm trying to hold out until I own all of them so I can make a casting uh, spotlight video for you guys on all my super vans but there are a few uh, like old red lines that are promo pieces that are really expensive that I don't have. And uh, what I might do is just uh, make a video in the near future and then just insert pictures of those ones that I don't have. Because some of the ones that are missing from my collection, there's only a few. They go for hundreds and hundreds of dollars each if you get the original piece. Because there's only so many in there from like the early 80s. Um, 
So uh, there are some people out there making like restorations or customs of those. And that might be a possibility as well. Uh, next we'll check out this uh, Tulsa Rama 57 Plymouth Belvedere. Uh, you can see it already has some damage on the cart anyway. So this is the one that's going to get opened. This is the brand new version. And we'll get a shot of the bottom. Looks like it has a number on it. 264. Looks like it's a raw metal base, nice rubber tires, very detailed base. And this is a gold. Nice white wall tires, nice looking wheels. 57 Plymouth Belvedere. Next up we got the uh, Green Light Hitch and Tow Series 20 set. First, we'll check out the van, and then we'll check out the trailer, if I can get them out of the package here. Looks like it's got a lot of different packaging here to keep it all nice and situated, and comes with a little uh, crank that you can add to the front of the uh, trailer. Okay, we'll check out the trailer first. I did try to uh, put the crank in, but on my particular one, the crank doesn't really want to go in all the way. I'm not sure if you thread it in or if you're just supposed to push it in, but it's just a little piece of plastic and I don't want to break it. There's not much to it. So I'm just going to leave it. I don't really care about the crank. I'll probably like ditch the crank anyway. Um, so, but there's the uh, trailer. It's got the little uh, tongue on the front so you can hook it up. I believe the van does have a hitch on the back. Yes, it does. So you can hook the trailer up to it. And uh, the trailer opens up. The back flips down so you can drive a vehicle up in the back. And it has like a little uh, AC unit on top. Like a vent. So it could have like air conditioning inside. A little side door. Uh, side door doesn't open I don't believe. I think it's just there for show. But cool paint scheme. Same as the van. Orange and blue. Standard uh, golf colors. Let's see if the van will fit inside. Because it's a pretty big trailer. Just barely. It does feel like it grabs a little bit. So yeah, the, the van does fit inside. But just barely. You might end up scratching up the, body, the paint scheme a little bit. Trying to get it in there if, if you try to put the van inside because it just barely fits. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to get it back out. Hopefully I didn't scratch up my van. See, it's a pretty snug fit there. So we'll set the trailer aside and then we'll uh, check out the van. like the uh, paint scheme on this van pretty cool the uh, classic golf livery orange and light blue powder blue you can see it's got the little hitch on the back and it's got multiple rows of seats windows So this is one of the the cooler uh, Ford Club Wagon van releases so far. So I'm glad to add that one to the collection. Like I said, I'm not going to collect every single one of these, but I will pick up the ones that have uh, a cool paint job on them or some hot rod styling. 
I'm hoping that Greenlight will retool it a little bit and, and release uh, like a cargo van uh, with some like wild graphics on the side like a mural or something. I'm not a big fan of the windows. And then last but not least we'll check out this uh, M2 Dodge A100. 7,000 pieces. Not a chase piece or anything. Just a uh, Fairly plain Jane Dodge A100 uh, pop top van or camper van. I'll take the uh, acrylic cover off and just let it rotate with the base on it so you can see what the uh, the base says. You can see it says 1964 Dodge A100 camper van on the base. Now I'm not sure. I'm going to test it out, but I don't think the pop top. Uh, sinks down into the van i think it's like stuck on top permanently in the up position but i'm not 100 percent sure i believe this is the first um camper van style uh dodge a100 van that m2 has put out except for like with this uh certain kind of pop-up top there was another camper in the first uh six van release but it was a totally different shaped camper it had more of like a dome shape to it so this is the first, like, VW-style uh, Sunnigan pop-up camper. But like I said, I don't believe it goes up and down. We'll take a look. No. There's a... If you look inside, if you can see, there's, like, no hole in the roof at all. So this is just, like, riveted or glued on. And uh, if it was up to me, I would just, like, keep this van... But just tear this part right off and just kind of smooth it off if there's any glue. I think there's some sort of plastic rivets or whatever that are holding it on. So if you did take this off, it might have some holes in the top of the van where this thing is secured on. It's on there pretty good. But I'm going to take it off the base for you guys uh, so you can check out the bottom and give it another spin. Okay, well, here's the bottom of the van. Uh, just black painted metal base, uh, skinny rubber tires. The wheels are black on the outside, but they forgot to paint the inner part of the wheel. So it's like a vanilla off-white color wheel on the inside, but on the outside they're black. Um, so just black, supposed to look like black steel wheels with uh, Dodge Dog Dish hubcaps or mini covers. It's got uh, blacked out grill and bumpers and says uh, 1964 on the uh, license plates. It's got the little spare tire on the back. Like I said, uh, this camper top is in the permanent up position. There is no hole cut through to the roof where this could like retract and you could push it down and it would lay flat with the roof line on top. It's uh, just permanently in an up position. So but there are some rivets that go through so i think if you did take it if you can see there uh if you did take it off and remove it um you might have some holes in the roof where the rivets or whatever plastic anchors go through to hold the plastic piece on so so that's it for the new M2 1964 Dodge A100 camper van. Alright guys, that's pretty much it for this month's diecast haul video. Here's everything for the video. Uh, all the stuff I opened and one I'm keeping carded. I want to say a special uh, shout out and thanks to SC Diecast. Uh, they're one of the uh, local uh, diecast sellers that are uh, from my area that come to our diecast event. Um, so make sure you check them out. Um, they're selling Facebook, they sell on Amazon, they sell on eBay. Um, really great people, great customer service, and most of all, great prices. So make sure you check them out. Uh, I'll have a link and information in the description. Also, there'll be a link in the description on how you can get a discount on your order with Mascar Displays just for my subscribers. I have a special promo code, so if you're in the market to get some 
uh, display cases for die cast or other stuff. Uh, you could check out Mascar Displays and get 15% off any order with Mascar Displays if you use my special promo code, which will be uh, listed in the description of this video. So uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my Facebook page, That Van Guy. You can also check me out on Instagram. I'm that underscore diecast underscore van underscore guy. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Have a great day.